Oh, Peter, stealing carrots again? Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. My buddies Tracy of Tracy Vanover Designs and Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling have brought us together for Mr. McGregor's Garden Collaboration, where we'll celebrate all things spring with some of our most talented friends. I'll show you how to make this adorable Peter Rabbit. Let's get into it. We're using a 2.8 foam ball, a half of a 3.8 foam ball, Model Magic, and some armature wire. I grabbed a handful of clay and I'm going to condition it by kneading it. I feel like the more you knead it and condition it, the less likely it is to crack. Then I'm going to roll it until it's nice and flat. You know, I like it to be nice and thin like a pancake. I lay it over the half foam ball, pressing to ensure that it's really well adhered to the foam and I'll cut away any of the excess. This is going to be his body and we only really need part of his body so this works just fine. I did cover the bottom of this. I'm not sure I show you that, but I did, you know, add a layer of clay. Okay, next, I'm going to make a flat spot on the 2.8 ball by tapping it on the table. You could cut it too, but I didn't have a knife handy, so this works just as well. This is going to be his head, of course. Next, I roll some clay into a ball. I'm going to attach this to the foam ball to create an egg shape. Of course, better if you already have a foam egg. You could skip this if you do. But the only foam egg I had was just way too small. See? So, we're going to make our own. I'll shape the clay so that it's flat on bottom with a round top. Kind of like a ravioli or a sunny side up egg. Once I get it to the size and shape that I need, I'm going to attach it to the ball with a toothpick. Pressing it on until it's well stuck. You know the deal. I really just want to make sure that it's on there really well because we're going to cover the whole thing with the clay in a minute. Yeah, so this is what it looks like. Egg-ish. Not the perfect egg, but it's good, right? <laughs> okay, so we're going to cover it with more flattened clay, same as before. Working it and pressing it, cutting and pulling away any of the excess. And I'm just going to wrap the clay around the ball the best I can adding patches, you know, where it needs it, and then we'll smooth it out once it's all covered. For me, I roll it around on the table to smooth it out. That's what's easiest for me. So, do what's easiest for you. I'm going to use another toothpick to attach his head to his body, and I just want to make sure that I'm getting that head on <laughs> right. There we go. We want his egg shape to be sticking out to the side. You know what I mean? To fill the gap between his head and body, I rolled a thin clay cane. I'm just going to push that right in there and use my tool handle to incorporate it into the rest of the clay. This is really just to keep the two pieces together. You won't see much of it once he's finished, so I'm not terribly worried about it. I just want to make sure that the two pieces stay together. See, it more or less looks like one piece of clay now. I make wee impressions for his eyes, not too deep. I'm using this ball tool, but you could use the back of a paintbrush or something that would work. I've cut some armature wire and looped it into bunny ear shape. And I'm going to twist the wire together at the bottom to make a small stem. We're going to need that to attach the ears. I make the stem, I don't know, about a half inch or so. That works. I picked this wire up in the clay section of Michael's and it's really flexible so you don't need any tools. It's very easy to twist. Now we're going to cover them with some clay. To do this, I'll push the wire into the clay just enough to leave an impression. So we're going to need two for each ear. And this is just giving me the shape that I need to cut out. I'll use my long blade to get the general shape and then I'll come in with my X-Acto knife to get a little more detail. Now, this looks ominous, this blade, but it's really not much of a blade at all. It doesn't cut anything but the clay. We're 
We're going to sandwich the wire between the clay, making sure that our stem isn't covered. We want that sticking out at the bottom. And I'm just going to press these pieces together with my finger. And then I'm going to roll over the edge with that ball tool. Again, you could use the handle of a paintbrush to do this. I'm just trimming away a little excess clay there. Okay, so I just want to smooth that out a wee bit. Let's make an impression to define his inner ear. And this that I'm using, this is just a nut pick. So, you know, whatever you have around the house, you don't really need the clay tools. Anything works. I poke a hole in the top of his head with my nut pick and I place the ear into it. I add a small clay patch to the back of his ear to both hide the wire that's poking through and to add some stability. And of course, I'll smooth that out a wee bit too. And I'll do the same for the other ear as well. I've cut a strip of clay to create his collar and a smaller strip for his lapels. I'll wrap that collar right around his neck and I'm going to kind of push it in the center to give it a little bit of an indentation, you know, so that it's kind of concaved around his head and neck. Does that make sense? <laughs> I position his lapels down the front of his chest and I'm going to overlap the collar so that, you know, it's hiding the end of the lapel. So it looks like it's all one piece. See what I mean? To create his paws, I roll out a pudgy log of clay and I'm going to round each end and then I'm going to cut it in half. That looks good. They're just about the same size. To make the cuffs of his jacket, I rolled out another cane of clay and I'm flattening it with my ruler. I'll trim off the rounded ends there so I get a nice flat edge. And I'm going to wrap them around his arms, leaving a couple inches of his paw showing. Making sure that the cuffs are, you know, in the right spot, that they match. His paws are going to overhang the bucket, so what I'm going to do is bend them over the edge, and once I get them shaped, I'll remove them to let them dry. Yeah, that looks good and we're just going to pop them off and set them aside to dry. He's going to need some carrots, so I just rolled a cane of clay, narrowing the one end to a point, and I'm going to add some bumps like you'd see in a carrot, and then I'll add some ridges to them as well. And we're going to let everything dry overnight. Meanwhile, we'll work on his bucket. So I'm going to spray paint this galvanized bucket, which I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to spray paint it with some flat matte black and mostly this is to prime the metal to accept my top coat of white chalk paint. I'm going to apply two coats of Folk Art Adirondack White. I want this to have a vintage enamel appearance so I'm hitting the top rim with black ink using a cosmetic sponge. Paint or a sharpie would work too. I'm going to use a paintbrush to add the ink to this ridge here along the top. And I'm also going to hit that rim around the bottom. Back to the cosmetic sponge to add some worn spots with the black ink. You guys, I'm so glad that the spring is almost here. We've had a couple of really nice warm days recently and now I have spring fever. It's always nice to not have to bundle up. Let's add some rust as well. I'm using Tim Holtz Vintage Photograph ink for this. No real rhyme or reason, just anywhere where I think rust might turn up on an old bucket. You know, we want this to look like it's been hanging around in the garden for years. I designed my Mr. McGregor's garden label in Photoshop. I misspelled McGregor. Anyway. I'll distress the edges with black and vintage photograph inks too. I'll take the time now to tell you that you can check out Tracy's Etsy shop for all your printable needs. She has the cutest designs, something for everyone. 
I'll have a link to her shop in the description box for you. Go check her out. I'm telling you, adorable. Okay, I think that's pretty good. What do you think? I apply Mod Podge to both the bucket and the back of the label, and I'm going to position it as straight as I can. I want to make sure that the edges are well stuck down, and then I'm going to apply a top coat of Mod Podge to the label too. I always start by adding the center of the label first and then wrapping it around. It helps. <laughs> it's not a guarantee to get it straight. I do have to reposition this a little bit, I think. But anyway, add in a little extra Mod Podge to make sure that the edges are staying in place. And then the top coat. And I'm just pouncing this on with a cosmetic sponge. I felt like this needed some patina, so I dry brush on some Ceram Coat Seafoam just slightly. You feel me? And this will pull in some green. I paint some black stripes along the top. I'm going to wing it. You could always tape out the stripes if you prefer, but I want this to have a hand painted look. I don't mind if it's not perfectly symmetrical, which is a good thing because it isn't. <laughs> I'm embracing my flaws. Then I dry brush one side of the stripes with some seafoam. Then I'm going to spray on a coat of clear matte sealer. I felt like that seafoam added a little bit of a vintage feel. Our clay is dry and ready for paint. So I base coat him with Ceram Coat Oyster White. Just the rabbit, not the jacket. This is like an off-white with a vintage flavor. It's really pretty. I painted his nose and eyes with Ceram Coat Ring Gray. I'm making like a Y shape to form his nose and a wee bit of his mouth. And then I'm gonna come in and just kind of sketch in little ridges before I fill in his nose. I outline his eyes too. They're kind of teardrop shape before I fill them in. That's a good start. Now that I have his features painted, I'll base coat his fur with two coats of Ceram Coat Milk Chocolate. I'm leaving his muzzle, the area around his nose, the oyster white color. And I'm leaving the edge kind of sketchy so that it looks more like natural, you know, like natural fur. I'm also going to leave a wee space around his eyes oyster as well. His chest will be brown, and of course, so will his paws. His jacket gets two coats of Ceram Coat Waterfall. I love this blue. I should really use it more often. It's kind of got like a French blue feel. I almost forgot his sleeves and his cuffs. <laughs> I was a little all over the place the day I was painting these. You'll see what I mean when we get back to his eyes. Anyway, the inner ear is painted with Americana Blush Pink. I'm floating more oyster around his eyes to give them more definition. I did prep my brush first with floating medium, side loaded with the oyster white, stroked it on my plate to load the bristles, and then I went from there. I'm not really sure why I didn't show the process like I usually do, but like I said, I was all over the place that day. Sometimes I'm just so involved in the project that I forget that I'm filming. I forget these steps. I apologize. So as I was saying, I totally got ahead of myself and I added Easter highlights to his eyes, but we will come back and fix that later. In the meantime, to give his fur texture, I'm using a liner brush and I load the brush with burnt sienna and I tip it in Mississippi mud so that both colors will appear in my stroke. This is called tipping. <laughs> Appropriate. I, I, I tend to use this technique when I paint hair or fur. It adds depth. Yeah, so I'll do this all over his brown fur. The most important thing is to keep the strokes going in a natural direction, if you know what I mean, like the way the hair would grow on the rabbit. Here I'll pull in a little tighter so you can get a better look.
I want to make sure we get his ears too. And we'll do his chest and his paws. Okay, so I'm back to his eyes. Now his eyes get a hippo gray outline and of course la la lashes and brows. And you guys, as I'm doing this, I'm looking at it and thinking something is still not right. So I just keep going, doing my thing, outlining. Then I finally realized that I forgot to give him pupils. So I'm dotting those in with hippo gray and I do give them Easter highlights. I float around his muzzle with Stramp Coat Cinnamon, just to add a little shading. And I shade the inside of his ears. I'm holding the pink corner of my brush to the line where the brown and the pink paint meet. So the, the shading is actually falling inside the pink. And I'll shade his chest just where the fur meets the jacket. And I shade the fur around the collar. And now the fur on his paws. I also shaded around his eyes a little bit. I think you can kind of see it here. But now I'm shading around his muzzle with mm, natural blush, I think it's called. It's really hard to see on camera. Much more visible in person. I will have all my paint colors listed in the description box for you. I shade his jacket with Williamsburg. And again, it's just anywhere where a natural shadow would fall. That's where I'm going to add the Williamsburg. And we'll come down along his lapels. Around the bottom of his collar. And of course around the cuffs. I got buttons on his jacket with Oyster. I made him some whiskers from strands of paintbrush bristles. So I'm just going to dip the end into Mod Podge and I'll stick them right there on his face. You know, where whiskers go. <laughs> there we go. Cute. In case you're wondering, this is the brush I clipped the bristles from. On to the carrots. The carrots get two coats of Ceram Coat Bittersweet Orange. Then I'm going to brush on a wash of Burnt Orange, wipe it back. Then add a wash of Burnt Sienna to give them, you know, a little bit of grunge. The carrot leaves are made from some black and gray linen ribbon. I poke a hole in the top of the carrot, add some hot glue and push it into the hole. Since the grass I'm using is green, I wanted the carrot sleeves to contrast that, and this also pulled in colors from the bucket. Once I get these in place, I'm going to spray all of the clay pieces with a clear matte sealer. I hot glue some fluorofoam to the inside of the bucket. Peter will sit on top of this. I use both 3-in-1 glue and hot glue to attach Peter to the foam. And I'll attach his paws to the edge of the bucket with the 3-in-1 and hot glue as well. Let's get these bad boys on here. I really wanted some of that light green moss to fill the bucket, but all I could find was the dark stuff and I wasn't feeling that. So instead, I'm using paper shred. I do really like this lighter green. And I'm really packing it down in there. And finally, I'll arrange his carrots all around him and he's done. He turned out super cute. I'm really happy with him. Trouble follows this cutie. Always nosing about Mr. McGregor's garden. He loves McGregor's veg. 
<laughs> I'm digging them. Let me know what you think. Please be sure to check out Tracy and Dawn's channels. Links are in the description box, along with a link to the playlist, which is full of inspiration. Show everyone some love. I've linked Tracy's Etsy shop too. Tracy's not feeling well. Feel better, girlfriend. You'll find a list of my supplies in the description box too. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.